Minister of Community and Social Services. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in recognition of November 25th as the United Nations International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Across Canada, domestic violence is the second most common reason for calls to emergency police services. For example, last year in Ontario, more than 10,000 women and over 6,900 of their children were served by an emergency violence against women shelter, and more than 40,000 women and 4,000 children children received counselling from violence against women counsellors. There are many more grim statistics, including the fact that Ontario accounts for 65% of police reported human trafficking cases in Canada, 70% are for the purposes of sexual exploitation. Just last month, Canada's Chief Public Health Officer, Dr. Gregory Taylor, released a report on family violence, noting that the impacts of family violence on health go beyond direct physical injury. They are widespread and long-lasting and can be severe, particularly for mental health. It's clear that violence against women impacts us all, not just the women who are victims and survivors, it's their children, their families, and also their communities. And that's why everyone must be part of the solution. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to say that our government is committed to doing more to protect women and their children from domestic violence. We have long recognized that Ontario needs a consistent, comprehensive and sustained approach to reducing and preventing this type of violence. Our Domestic Violence Action Plan has strengthened domestic violence programs and services and our transformative It's Never Okay Action Plan to Stop Sexual Violence and Harassment outlines concrete steps we are taking to address sexual violence and harassment in our province. Since releasing the plan in 2004, the Ontario Women's Directorate has implemented many initiatives to raise awareness of domestic violence and strengthen supports for victims, including the Neighbours, Friends and Families Public Education Campaign, the Employment Training for Abused and At-Risk Women Program, the Language Interpreter Services Program, and training for frontline professionals and service providers. The Women's Directorate and my ministry are now working together to review existing programs and services to create an updated domestic violence action plan with the Ministry of the Attorney General and the Ministry of Community Safety and Correctional Services. But the work doesn't stop there. In February, the Ontario government released Walking Together, Ontario's long-term strategy to end violence against Indigenous women. This strategy builds on the existing work of Indigenous partners, community organizations and government and it reflects the priorities of Indigenous leaders and communities to support healing. And earlier this month, I was pleased to announce Jennifer Richardson as director of the new Provincial Anti-Human Trafficking Coordination Office. As part of the $72 million anti-human trafficking strategy, this office will coordinate collaboration across government and with law enforcement, justice, social, health, education, and child welfare sectors. Mr. Speaker, our investments recognize how vital it is that women get the immediate supports they need need to move out of violent relationships and into a safer life for themselves and for their children. Together, our many programs and services are focused on our commitment to ending violence against women. Through the Ministry of Community and Social Services, we provide $85 million to fund 96 emergency violence against women shelter agencies to support over 2,000 beds across the province. We also provide funding for counselling services for women and their children, programs to help children recover from witnessing violence, supports to help women fleeing violence to find housing and connect with local community resources, crisis telephone counselling lines including Talk for Healing, a Violence Against Women Aboriginal Helpline in Northern Ontario. This past year, I announced that we would be supporting the unique challenges faced by violence against women shelters and agencies in rural, remote and northern communities by investing more than $1 million in 16 projects through the Rural Realities Fund. We are working with the Violence Against Women Stakeholder Advisory Group, agencies and our partner ministries to help agencies develop coordinated plans to respond to tragedies or crises involving violence against women in their communities.
We have also partnered with Violence Family Services Ontario to pilot couples conjoint counselling programmes for those experiencing situational violence. In addition, almost 19,000 families receiving social assistance will see an increase in income by an average of $282 per month, or $3,380 annually, most of whom are single parent households. We also ensured that families receiving social assistance would fully benefit from the new federal Canada Child Benefit without any provincial clawback. Our investments in programs to reduce violence against women have increased by 61 per cent since 2003, but we know that funding is only part of the solution to this systemic problem. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to the day where we end violence against women. In the short term, we will find better ways to protect women and their children, but in the long term, we will work to reduce the incidence of domestic violence. I invite all honourable members to join us in our fight against domestic violence. Beginning November 25th, the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, until December 10th, International Human Rights Day, there will be 16 days of activism, a campaign to galvanize action to end violence against women and girls around the world. There are also several campaigns underway in the province this month, including the Ontario Association of Interval and Transition Houses Wrapped in Courage Purple Scarf Campaign and the White Ribbon Campaign. Throughout the month of November, the Ontario Association of Interval and Transition Houses are inviting everyone in Ontario to show their support by wearing a purple scarf and letting abused women and their children know they are not alone. Wearing a purple scarf is a symbol of the courage it takes a woman to leave her abuser. Wearing a purple scarf is a reminder that it takes the strength and support of an entire community to end violence against women. On November 28th, 08th will once again be at Queen's Park to celebrate International Day to End Violence Against Women and their Wrapped in Courage campaign. I would encourage all members to join in wearing a purple scarf on that day. We must work together so that every woman and child in Ontario can live free from violence. Let's make this a transformative time for women in Ontario and build a safer future for every woman and girl in this province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.